Thanks for tuning in to the Orlando Museum of Art's new video series, Paintings and Pandemics. While the museum is currently closed to the public, we still believe our collection can truly inspire those who are watching at home. I'm David Madison, OMA's Associate Curator of Education and Outreach. And I'm Molly Driscoll, the Associate Curator for Community Engagement. We are organizing this video series by selecting works in our collection whose period of creation corresponds to past pandemics. That's not to say that the artists we are choosing to highlight were necessarily affected by these pandemics. Rather, we are simply thinking about historical context overall. We admit, neither one of us is an expert in pandemics. We're museum educators who love discussing works of art. We're also not used to being on camera like this. We prefer working with visitors in person. So we appreciate your willingness to experiment with us. You know, we've heard a lot about social distancing recently. And just as a note, we are filming these videos preemptively, and the museum is abiding by CDC recommendations, closing to the public, canceling events, and having staff work from home. Like you, we will be tuning in to watch these from home as they are released over the course of the next few weeks. That's right. We sure will miss seeing one another and our visitors, but hopefully these videos are a way for us to continue to connect and further the mission of the museum to inspire creativity, passion, and intellectual curiosity by connecting you with art and new ideas. Anyway, social distancing is the only effective way to slow the spread of COVID-19. And as we begin to physically disconnect for the time being, I'm thinking about the inevitability of loneliness that many of us may feel. Solitude can have its benefits though. There are many artists who created their best works when they were able to separate from the hullabaloo of society and focus on their creative process. Oh, you're absolutely right. And I'm sure many of us will use this time to reflect and be creatively productive. In fact, we would love to read about or see what you're creating during this time. Share in the comment section of this video what you're working on. For artists, that might be an image of a new work. Or for writers, share a link to your blog. Articles that have kept you motivated, share those too. Let's keep the creativity flowing. Great idea, Molly. Well, I'm bringing up loneliness because that's one word that we hear to describe the landscapes of Herman Herzog, like the St. John's River entering the Atlantic Ocean. There's something lonely about this one, isn't there? I mean, I've always thought about this work as peaceful or serene, but that serenity may be based on the sort of romantic ideal of being lonely out in nature. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we enter this painting along the trail and arrive at a fish camp set along the shore. Mm -hmm. And though there is a small fire burning, suggesting the evidence of a human presence, there is actually no person in this scene. Do you think it's Herzog's fishing camp? I mean, maybe. In the 1880s, he made frequent solo trips throughout the undeveloped Florida wilderness. He was very much so inspired by the beauty of this environment. But he also reflects the solitary nature of these experiences through choice details. Well, in this case, it's the small fire. A Philadelphia critic noted about Herzog's other paintings that no one knows better than he how to intensify the loneliness of a forest dell by the introduction of a shy deer or a solitary heron. I suppose the work of an artist is often lonely, but you know, that's not what strikes me about this piece. I love the way he handles his paint. He's quite skillful at creating that soft, hazy effect. You're so right. That haziness you're talking about makes this feel like the beginning of a hot, humid Florida summer day. This is definitely a painting you can feel, like the weight of the moisture in the air against your skin. Do you also think this is a painting you can hear? I love that question. We often ask our young visitors to use their senses when they look at this piece. For instance, if you were to jump into this painting, what sounds might you hear? We get a lot of different answers to that. Goals, waves crashing, 
cicadas chirping, fawns rustling, and buzzing. Buzzing? Why buzzing? Mosquitoes! Can you imagine exploring this landscape with mosquitoes all around? And insect repellents, as we know them today, were not invented until World War II. Well, Florida would have been a really nasty environment in a time before air conditioning and mosquito repellent. It would have been more than nasty. It was lethal, especially during Herzog's time. Yellow fever was a very deadly disease that was transmitted by mosquitoes. Its name is based on the yellow color of infected people's skin caused by the shutting down of internal organ systems. It's pretty grisly. Now, there were no reported cases of yellow fever in Florida during the time Herzog was painting, but yellow fever had already left a legacy throughout the South. There were many outbreaks during the 19th century, including places like Georgia, Texas, and in 1878, the entire Mississippi River Valley, from St. Louis to New Orleans. That year, there were 120,000 reported cases of yellow fever. At the time, scientists believed that yellow fever spread from person to person, rather than by being bitten by an infected mosquito. This misbelief led to many quarantine efforts that proved ineffective. It also led to panic and migration out of cities where yellow fever was prevalent. In 1878, one-fifth of the population left New Orleans after hearing the news of the first yellow fever victims in their city. The city's streets emptied, and with them, business in this bustling port town came to a halt. Now, somewhat ironically, remember that the cause of yellow fever was still undetermined. A New Orleans reporter wrote of the vacated city that, quote, only our mosquitoes keep up the hum of industry, end quote. In Memphis, city officials issued a quarantine that stopped all rail travel into the city. Even still, a local food stand operator caught the disease, and after learning of his death, over half the city fled east, hoping to escape the epidemic. By the end of 1878, 20,000 people had died of yellow fever. As a result, the federal government created new public health laws for prevention. Thankfully, science continues to evolve and new solutions were discovered. Synthetic insecticides and repellents greatly helped combat mosquitoes and a yellow fever vaccine was invented in 1938. Other measures like wearing protective clothing and screening in homes are important for preventing the spread of yellow fever within affected areas, though these are not as effective as insect repellent or a vaccine. Do you think the netting in Herzog's painting was meant to keep out the bugs? <laughs> I'm not sure that's the case, but it is an important detail to the painting as a whole. What do you think about this painting by a well-regarded 19th century landscape painter? Are there details we have missed that stand out to you? In the comments section, we've included a list of questions for continuing the conversation with loved ones at home. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode of Paintings in Pandemics. If you haven't already, like and follow the museum's social media accounts for more exciting content, news about our reopening, and future events and classes that we offer. You can also show your financial support by donating via text message. Just text OMA to 71777 to make your contribution. Thanks for watching Paintings in Pandemics, brought to you by the team at the Orlando Museum of Art.